It's all good. Coolio. Um, so I'm going to read several things out of a whole lot of shaken, um, just because I love to revisit it. It's such fun. I did a bunch of paintings that went with it, and Rich was kind enough to do a, a book that included the paintings. So I'm going to read about four pieces um, out of that, that book. The first piece is called A Mid-Century Riff. A lot went on in those post-war times. Those cats did not have time others took for granted, so a lot of them, just a lot went on. Crazy, Kerouac, Cage, Retro, Pollock, just a lot going on, nuclear times. And nobody played ironic or blasé because nobody felt they had the time not to care. And I think that it had to do, and this is the painting I did that went with this. This had to do with, I believe, the awareness that those of us, particularly who grew up in that time, had of the, the possibility of nuclear destruction right then. And we've sort of forgotten about that now. And as a result, we've gotten fat and sassy and, and lazy in the way we approach things. We've, we've gotten hypnotized by by uh, spectacle more than ever before. And that's a bit about what this next one is about, how much is enough. How much is enough? Not enough substance, not enough grounding, not enough enoughness. We long for less spectacle, less promise, instant happiness. We long for more real, more wild, more what's right here. We long for what is right now. And this is called the Backyard Bombast Blues. The bomb shelter business is booming underground. Sanctuaries, concrete blast, door threats of erratic missile lobbing, intransient clerics hell bent on gating nuclear weaponry, nuclear weaponry, impending total collapse of a global financial system, atomic hideouts, hardened exterior capable of resisting a barrage of automatic weapon fire. Concrete cocoon can withstand a 10 kiloton improvised nuclear device. So you're safe. Doomsday condos, guaranteed to leave a crater in your bank account. You know, I grew up when, when there were bomb shelters. In fact, I went looking for a house to purchase about maybe 30 years ago, and there was one in their backyard, and you know, we got to go down in it, and they were trying to tell me how to make a nice playroom for my kids. This is called The Wild Owen. Oh, here's the painting that accompanies it. The wild. You gotta paint serious. Carve, score, spatter, mush, tear, throw in a corner, shove behind others to get wildness. Enough unpredictability to tweak us out of our reverie and into our deep inside. Drag us past disintegration, trance our melancholia, dance us through ambiguity, goose our spirits and point us toward home. The sanctuary is dark this morning, quiet morning. I approach the altar, folding back the linen, taking a deep breath, I begin to mix my paint. And one more out of a whole lot of shaken. Moving past ego. I found Pollock onto something so big it just absorbed him. Expression, abstraction, color, careful concern, aesthetic nuance, material transcending material. Sitting with gesture confronting enormity, another summer standing next to ocean and once again 
called Beyond. That's, this is my Paula Kask painting. <laughs> 